Hey, what's up, fam? Thank y'all for tuning in once again. As always, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, hit the notification bell so every time I drop a video, you will be the first to know about it. Real quick, rest in peace. Shout out to Kevin Samuels once again. I know a lot of people don't like these women. Who y'all can say nothing but bad things about this guy, but this man was smart. This man was, he was the one. Man, I like his methods. I may not like some of his some of his methods sometimes. Sometimes I might have thought he was trolling. It is what it is. But when he comes with the facts and he's stating things, think about a person who state facts and truths. You don't, your story don't change. You'll hit them with the same numbers, with the same information all the time. And when no one can dispute it, the only thing they can say is he was mean. But let me tell you something. One thing Kevin Simmons will say to these young ladies who were on his show trying to find a high value man or claim they were, they were a high value woman, but they're not married. They're in their thirties, forties, still looking for men, claim they should be treated like queens when they don't act like it for whatever reason. One thing he would ask them is, have you been to third? Cause it sounds like you've had a hard, rough life. You know, you had a mother who was abusive. Maybe a dad was abusive. You didn't grow up right. You single mother, you know what I'm saying? Baby daddy gone. Baby daddy might've cheated on you. Baby daddy might be in prison. But whatever the case may be, you sound bitter. You sound mad. You sound upset. You're not in shape. You claim to be a boss B, but you always angry. It just sounds like something ain't right with you mentally. Have you been to therapy? Some women will say, yes. Did you complete it? Are you still going? Like, no, I went a couple of times this and the third. Well, then, you know, saying you're not healed. And what I saw in the article where, you know, one lady said, no, it was a video. And a woman said that she's a therapist. And a lot of times when it's, she have, she, 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 she's seeing couples after a couple of only a couple of sessions, the women quit, stop coming because she starts to go in. If you want to call say it like that on the women, she talks to them about their flaws, their faults. And as long as she's talking about the man, the woman is fine. The man better sit there and take it. Then I have nothing to say. They don't say nothing negative at all. But as soon as she go in on the woman, so talking about her issues, now she gets upset and she don't want to go back. Go figure. But anyway, so I'm on this in what's this CNBC.com. And the story reads: 92% of American adults say they prefer to date people who've been to therapy. Survey shows. Now, why is that significant? And why I'm making a video about this? It's because the world is getting smarter. For the most part, it looks like. And it's and they're starting to open their eyes to a lot of things and and starting to understand that a lot of that you have to go back to the basics, to the original. You have to figure out in order to live, in order to have the best life, man, you gotta figure out how to how to fix problems how to correct problems or how to correct issues or how to deal with issues. Let's say that. Okay. And a lot of people have been in denial, especially us black people. We don't talk about, we say we don't want to go to therapy. We don't want to talk to nobody about our business, about our personal life. But a lot of us have gone through trauma. And that's one thing I, I realized. Now I said before that I made a crack with my parents saying I blame them for all this all this good middle class living that they raised me and my sister on because I see a lot of people out there with a bunch of issues. Now don't, again, my parents both are from little small country races, little towns in Texas and Arkansas. You know what I'm saying? They met in Dallas, young, got married. Dad worked at his job for years. My mom went, worked at her career for years. Well, his career for years. Mom had a career going to school. They both went to school throughout the marriage, got couple of degrees here and there. Went from, I tell y'all, like from Grove Village on up. 
in, in, in Pleasant Grove in Dallas, Texas. And, you know, like Drake say, started from the bottom. Now they're here, you know, so now they, they got older, retired, living a nice little old spread out in what used to be the country, but it's grown so fast. So it's like, but anyway, still kind of suburban, like rural, not really suburb. Not, not it ain't that close to Dallas, but that's what uh that's you know so that so that's the story. They you know they came from that, but they worked hard to make sure me and my sister had what we you know being able to you know to to get to have what we had and to actually be the people that we are now. So like I said, I thank them for that for real. But. I see a, like a lot of people have some sort of trauma, don't matter if you're middle class or not. They got problems. Hell, I've said you before, y'all know with me, been divorced, went through hell through those child support uh, case uh, court court hearings for really no reason because I've always been there for my kids since before day one, but it's the old jank ass lawyers. But anyway, I mean, you know, you've seen hurt, you've seen death in families, you know, you. You know what I'm saying? The law, you know what I'm saying? I've had losses. I've been like broke, broke. I've lived off of retirement, 401k, same thing. Credit cards, plasma donations, student loans, trying to get through school as a grown man with two kids. I mean, so we all go through things. I've lived in uh, Canterbury Village in the cliff back in the day. It's, it's, uh, we all go through things, right? I've got trauma. I know people have been sexually assaulted as kids. A lot, of, a lot of females, they get sexually assaulted at young men do too, boys do too. But I mean, you know, women wise, they go through those sexual problems. They go through um, abuse from a partner, from, you know, from a boyfriend, a husband, parents, uncles, aunt, cousins, you know, kid, boys at school. They go through a lot. They have babies. You know, their body stretch out and shrink and stretch out and shrink having children. Uh, constantly trying to find some kind of emotion, emotional, uh, I don't know, escape. Trying to find, you know, peace and harmony, things like that. And that stuff weighs on a person. And we have to come to a conclusion to understand that everybody cannot deal with it. It's a saying that we have, I know in the black community, to me is ignorant as hell. People say, oh, God's only gonna give you what you can, what you can handle. Okay. Let's say that's true. I don't think it's completely true all the time, but let's say it's true. How do you handle it? Do you know how to handle it? You see what I'm saying? It's like kids. Got a math problem. And it's like saying, well, God gave you this math problem, this trigonometry problem. Problem. He don't. He wouldn't give you this problem if anything you can handle it. Okay, that may be true, but does a child know how to handle it? So how does a child handle it? You go to a teacher, you go to a someone to get um, tutoring. You find somebody who's smarter than you, who has been through this, who can show you how to work that problem out, right? But well, that's life. That's life. If you've been given something that you know that that God won't give you nothing more than you can handle, well, if you don't know how to handle it the right way, you will handle it the wrong way. You will handle it going out there trying to find a man, just need, just need a man and keep finding the wrong ones, not understanding the, the people that's in your environment, they may not be the right people. Uh, you go around trying to find a guy that can protect you from this last abuser, but he's an abuser too, but you're trying to get rid of that. I mean, it's the things, your parents can be abusive towards you. Do you know how to, do you know how to handle that? You, instead of going to therapy, cause you don't know about therapy and, and our community will tell you, don't go to therapy. So what do you do? You might mess around and take it out on your parents and have them missing. Or have somebody, yeah, or have somebody come and make sure that something happened to them. You might go out there and start doing drugs, might run away from home, become homeless, whatever. But if you don't know how to handle a problem, how are you going to fix yourself? And how are you going to be in a successful relationship with other people? There are people who have gone through personal loss, death in the family, of a brother, of a sister, of a father, of a mother, of a grandparent that raised them. They don't know how to cope without them. 
but since we don't like I said we don't go see shrinks and and the most high is only gonna give us something we can handle shoot we try we, we try to figure it out and everybody's just not equipped or capable of doing that but let's get into the article real quick give you a little, a little quick little spiel on here and and I get my take on it. It said common deal breakers in Dayton are typically tied to opinions on getting married and having children, but a recent survey has found a new red flag, not going to therapy. Dating app Pure polled 1,000 Americans aged 18 or over of various sexualities, ethnic and social backgrounds in September, recent. It found that most people are looking for partners who have, who have either seen a mental health professional in the past or are currently seeing one. You know why? Because that shows that you are a responsible person. You, 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 you can show responsibility that you know that your life is not perfect. First of all, a lot of people you know what they say. Misery loves company. That's one thing. So if they know that you are willing to say you got problems, then they like, well, shoot, I can deal with somebody who can admit that they got problems because I got problems too. So here we can both go to therapy and we can both get fixed together. And then here we might, you know what I'm saying? raise a great family together because we're going through therapy and we're trying to fix our problems. They, uh, fully 92% of those polls said that they prefer to date people who've been to therapy. The September, the September survey found seven in 10 singles are comfortable discussing mental health with someone new pure found while 50% responded that it is attractive. If therapy is brought up in conversation during the first date. So, yeah. Amazing. So let's say you're going to go pick up your date. Uh, you go to her apartment, tell her you be there at four. You get there at four. She has you waiting for an hour. Finally comes down. You say you're going to take her to the Cheesecake Factory. She's like, well, you go to Cheesecake Factory. Well, I guess we tell her get there. She ain't getting out the car because she's like, this is not cute. You're supposed to be courting me. Uh, what is this cheesecake? I wouldn't be caught dead in Cheesecake Factory. So basically, she wants you to spend a few hundred dollars. But Cheesecake Factory, you buy the right stuff, you're gonna spend a couple hundred dollars anyway. You tell her that you know, uh, well, I was gonna go somewhere else, but you came down so late, so our reservations we just wasn't gonna make it. So we're gonna go here, you know. So that is so unromantic, and so she's acting like you know, this is the worst thing ever, dude. You know how you can. Win her back. Tell her you're going to therapy. Man, who knew? Who knew? And then on the flip side, when he getting ready to say, man, look at her, you acting like a butt. I'm finna roll up out of here. You know how to get him to stop, to park that car so y'all can go in the Cheesecake Factory? Tell him you're going to therapy. Man, you can't, you can't, you can't lose. You can't lose, player. Man. So anyway, it says, for a minute, but seriously though, I mean, when you're courting, the first little day should be like going to a coffee shop. You know, drink a little coffee. McDonald's, hell, go to McDonald's and get a cup of coffee. Y'all can sit down, talk, get to know each other. Starbucks, sit outside, talk, get to know each other. And have a serious conversation and be like, hey, I'm going through therapy. You're like, oh, really? How, why is that? Because women love vulnerability. Women love to see a man being vulnerable. Let's just be honest. They want to see that. They, for some reason, think they're so sexy. It's like when you're getting to your feminine side or something like that. But it is what it is, I guess. But, you know, just say, hey, I'm going, you know, I had issues just trying to get things straight, blah, blah, blah. And for some reason, they find that attractive. I'll be damned. For many, the urge to date someone who has been in therapy is a result of a past experience. Some 23% absolutely believe that those who have, have are less likely to engage in weird or unpleasant behavior such as ghosting, Pure wrote in an article about the finest. I'm about to click on that article here in a minute. Therapy provides us with the tools to talk through our problems and make us more attuned to our emotions and subsequently those of others. That's why I think that's a good idea too. You know, even before people get married, I believe that you should go to couples therapy, marriage therapy. Because you you're two people now, it's, especially I think the, especially when you get a little older, I think it's more important because the older you get, the more you're set in your way. If you start out when you're young, y'all can grow together. And supposedly y'all can, you know, get 
But you still need to go through, I feel. No, I didn't do it, should have, but you still should go through like couples therapy so y'all can talk out issues, any problems, things that y'all are afraid to talk about with each other. Just when it's just you two, you have a mediator who will kind of create the scenarios, who will kind of bring up topics that need to be discussed before y'all get married. I think that's probably one of the smartest things you need to, that you need to do. And then maybe every few years, if not every year, go back for a refreshing. I think that's what needs, especially now, man. I think that's especially what, what especially, especially needed now. Uh, let's say psychotherapist Esther Perel sees pros and cons to this new reality in a June interview with Vanity Fair. She explained, I'm gonna put this link in the description box so y'all can click on these and read this stuff yourself. She explained how to shift to more transparency about emotional health and the benefits of counseling have created a space where more people can develop great self-awareness and prioritize self-reflection. There is something about bringing more clarity and understanding to things that people have struggled with forever and often in isolation, Perel said. At the same time, some people might hide behind therapy speak or use it to push others away, she asked. She gave an example of what that could look like. I don't like what you do, so I say you're gaslighting me, Perel said. You have a different opinion, and I, and I bring in a term that makes it impossible for you to even enter into a conversation with me. Labeling, labeling enables me to not have to deal with you. That is to say, while some people get useful insight and assistance out of working with a mental health professional, others may just get buzzwords. For that and that and other reasons, stay open to a good partner uh, who hasn't been in counseling. Pure suggests in a write-up on the website. And don't feel like you're a walking red flag just because you haven't been evaluated. Uh, if you've never felt the need for therapy, you're not ready or it's simply not for you. Pure wrote note, uh, notes, your romantic prospects are probably just fine. Yeah, yeah I mean, there are pros and cons because think about what's the show The Sopranos. Remember Tony Soprano was going to see uh, Dr. Melfi, kind of find out he was just using it to help run the mob. You know, going, talking about problems and she give him some kind of insight, professional insight and he uses it and takes it to help run his organization. People can use your vulnerability for, see it as a weakness and use it to manipulate you. They can, uh, like like a pimp or like somebody who, you know, these traffickers, they can, she, yeah, you both of y'all can go there and he could be talking, but he ain't emotionally there. But I think it will, <clears throat> if a person talks long enough, you will see the true person and it should make help you decipher if you want to be this person or not, which is cool. So no therapy isn't for everybody, but I do think a lot of people need it just for their own personal, not necessarily to get into a relationship with somebody, but just for self clarity and learning and, and, and trying to fix, you know, getting emotionally straight with yourself. Not necessarily, like I said, not necessarily for trying to be with somebody else. Because if you're not ready to be, if you, because if you ain't got yourself fixed, how in the heck you gonna, you gonna get in a relationship with somebody? I mean, you're just gonna create a volatile relationship too. But anyway, hey, tell me what y'all think about the story. Again, like I said, rest in peace, shout out to Kevin Samuels. He used to bring it up to them women. Have you been to therapy? Because you've been through a lot, and it seems like you've been through a lot. You need some help. <clears throat> you got to get your mind right first before you go out into this world dealing with some people that you ain't ready for. And if you ain't ready for them, you're going to be going through that same cycle of finding these no-count dudes or these no-count women who can't help you. And you know, and you can't help them. Because that's the main thing. about One thing about these therapy classes that will kind of worry me is, is it more geared toward someone, somebody being there for you or is it geared toward you being able to be there for someone else or can it be both because in a relationship the main thing in a relationship that you're supposed to be concerned about the person in the mirror is not what a person does for you and how they make you feel and what they do it's what you can provide for that person 
Because what you're supposed to do in a relationship, and this is old school, which is, which people have got away from, which they need to get back to. The purpose of you being in a relationship <clears throat> is you being a blessing to whoever you're with. Now, think about it. I know you know that you will be a blessing to your kids. You will be a blessing to your family. Hell, you might even, to your, I mean, to your parents. Hell, you might even be a blessing to your siblings. But are you a blessing to your husband or are you a blessing to your wife? Like you are to them children. Because you know you're going to do things for them kids and them kids ain't going to do a doggone thing for you. As a matter of fact, they're going to do everything they can to go against the rules. They're going to fight you tooth and nail every day until they get to a certain age. But your husband and your wife shouldn't be, shouldn't be doing that. Right? They're not going to do that. So if they're not doing that, why are you more concerned about what they're doing for you? Because like I say, old school, I was going to say old school ways are you supposed to go in a relationship, say I'm doing this, that, and the third. I'm going to do everything I'm supposed to do in this relationship to make my spouse, husband, wife, and maybe even boyfriend, girlfriend, if y'all courting. To, to make sure that they know that they're appreciated. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that they will want or need for nothing from, from, from the best of my ability. <clears throat> and, but if they don't do, if they don't reciprocate the same, then you know what? If this relationship ends, I can say, hey, I did everything I was supposed to do. Not sit here and banter and want to know why you ain't doing this, why you ain't doing that, I ain't doing that, blah, 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 you know, crying, oh, you're not being emotional, blah, blah, blah. Nah, forget all that. you supposed to, so when people say men want a woman, they say cook and clean or whatever, okay. Then you do that. You do it for the whole family. Not just for the kids, you do it for the whole family. You do it for your husband. Men, if you're supposed to, you know, all she want me to do is pay bills and this and the third and, you know what I'm saying, tripping on, okay, well, you know, you pay your bills, you be there for emotionally, y'all go on date nights, whatever. Uh, you know, you make sure you have your little time. You, you see, the thing about it is you work, you do what you got to do for the other person. So when it's time for you to have your little time, they'll be like, sometimes they might have to say, hey, you need to go take you some time off. Go watch the game. Go uh, go to, I don't know, go go with your girls to a poetry slam or something. I don't know. Which I, but you know what? When you actually are doing stuff for other people, that's the thing. You're supposed to be a blessing to everybody, everyone else. If you are a blessing to everybody else, then you will make sure everybody else is taken care of before you even think about yourself. And that's how you're supposed to do the person in the mirror, which means that the person that you with is supposed to be doing the same thing. And you shouldn't have to bring it up all the time because if you had to bring it up all the time, wonder what the problem is, why they're not doing this and the third, maybe you are asking the wrong questions or maybe you're asking for the wrong stuff or maybe you just asking for the wrong person but anyway tell me what you think about the story leave your comments below and then share it with the world and with that being said i leave you in peace and i'll see you on the other side